Fabulous. Well, um, welcome everyone to the third in our um, mini webinar series about the Revisioning School Camps Professional Development. Um, my name is Sophie Watson and I um, work for EONS as the Professional Development Leader for this program. Um, and today we are going to be talking with two of our case study schools about their Revisioning School Camps journey. Um, just a bit of background about the Revisioning School Camps Professional Development. So um, EONS has been running this professional development for the last, oh, since 2019, with the help of the Network of Expertise Funding. And um, this Revisioning School Camps Professional Development is about supporting teachers and schools to develop localised, place responsive and student-centred school camp programmes. Um, we have three more workshops coming up this year in November in South Auckland, live in and um, Timaru. So if you're interested in finding um, more out about the Revisioning School Camps um, resource, which is a free resource online on our website, or about signing up to the workshops, please go along to www.eonz.org.nz. Um, well, um, I would really um, welcome the two guest speakers that we have today. Um, they have both gone through the Revisioning School Camps professional development. And they've very kindly offered to share their um, experiences with us and the things that they've learned. And I have no doubt they've got some gems to share with us. Um, so thank you so much for the two of you for joining us and for being willing to share your expertise. Um, just some housekeeping things. If you can keep your uh, microphones on mute and ask questions at the end, that would be great. And um, we will have um, both presenters share their experiences for about 10 minutes each. And then you can ask questions after that. Um, so without further ado, um, I'd like to introduce our first speaker. Um, and that person is Shannon Johnson um, from Matamata Intermediate School. And Shannon is the deputy principal there and she's been involved with the revisioning school camps um, process from the beginning. Um, so I'd really like to welcome you, Shannon. Thank you so much. Okay. All right, I'll just uh, share my screen. Right. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, Namahi Noi Kia Kato um, Katoa. Um, yep. So I'm Shannon Johnson and I'm the deputy principal here at Matamata Intermediate. So a little bit of this is sharing um, from a leadership perspective, our journey of making sure we're connecting that why. Um, the, deputy, uh, the principal and I are very new leaders. Um, so we are aware of um, when initiatives are in place that it's our teachers at the front line who have to implement those and how um, what is our role as leaders in that space of connecting with that why for our people um, so a little bit we, we thought was important to share was um, I guess sharing the the research lens that drive um, what we do and why we do it um, a lot of our work is driven by our um, work with Potama Ponamu. So the theories that underpin or the initiatives that we engage with um, are underpinned by critical theory, kaupapa Māori, and our unwavering commitment to be um, acknowledging and implementing te reti o te waitangi in our space. Um, the initiatives that we implement are driven by our strategic plan. So our school vision of inspired learners empowered to achieve is our island that guides us and the initiatives that we do engage with um, have to be taking us on that journey where we're going. So the revisioning camps was very much um, aligning with our Ako Wananga goals as a school um, in terms of pedagogical practice, um, our curriculum, um, the direction we wanted to head in and meeting some of our whys. Um, so um, working with Potama Ponamu, our change model that we work with is ako critical context for change. So um, it's simultaneously engaging with all those areas that create change. So um, my background coming into this role in senior leadership is I've been a secondary school health and physical education teacher. So um, that lens came into this space um, and I was really privileged to work alongside Andrew Skipworth, who was part of developing the revisioning camps. So um, listening to him, I knew that our current practice here needed looking at. Um, and it coincided with some feedback from Fano that 
actually our camps weren't meeting um, what they saw was what our kids needed. So engaging with that homeschool community collaborations, we undertook um, a massive community consultation with our community. Um, this was probably the um, consultation that our whānau engaged most with next to changing our school uniform. So this was the one that meant something to them. Um, sitting alongside that, um, we had some student focus groups, what's their experiences, how were teachers experiencing it. And from there, we had um, a groups of teachers who wanted to look at what does our practice look like. Um, and they created a group, uh, like a working group, where we unpacked the data that we had on the table. Um, our board were an active part of this too, because we wanted this to sit within some governance there. Um, and we have a growing relationship with our mana whenua. So we constantly are meeting with them, looking at what are we doing? Um, is where we're heading aligning with um, where you want us to be going and what's important to you as our mana whenua. So from there, we were able to develop um, a government. We went to the board and this is the data we've got. Um, and sitting with that was, I guess, a governance statement which sat in policy um, as to what, I guess a broad statement as to what camps look like for us. Um, very much so that um, camps are not a, a treat or a, um, an add-on, it's actually an active part of our curriculum, deliberate teaching sits within that, um, but also just some guidelines around um, what's the expectations of length, cost, um, and safety, because that's where the governance stuff sits in place. Um, so, then it's starting with us working with developing teacher practice. So, um, you know, looking at the golden circles, I think historically we were starting with the what, what we'd do, the activities. So it was flipping it around in our why being our driver. So what is the purpose of camp? Why do we have them? What's the explicit teaching? Um, what are the needs of our students and how are we meeting that um, through our EOTC experiences. Um, our camps are at the start of the year um, and our chosen um, model of wellbeing that underpins what we do in our place is Te Whare Tapawha Haora. So um, that is our theme that guides our term one. So how are we integrating the learning that term to make our camps a real lived um, learning experience for our students? So that was our why. Um, how we went about that, how do we achieve our purpose was our go back to. Um, and then our what was the last thing. So it was a move away from the commodification of place and looking at the attractions that they had, but how does what we're doing in those spaces meet our why. Um, and that was our next slide, required a little bit of PLD to support that um, because um, a lot of our camps historically were probably, I'm going to um, Auckland, say, we had a trip, go up to Orewa, um, we're going to do snow planet, we're going to go rock climbing, we're going to do high ropes. Um, but the challenge there is actually what's the learning, the deliberate teaching and learning that sits within those spaces. And you can make things fit, but it, it was really just a, what does this place offer and what can we get out of it? So we supported staff by doing some a professional learning through staff meetings, looking at what would what is traditionally our camps look like, what are current best practice models that also align to, I guess, our classroom practice. Um, and that for us was one of the beauty of revisioning camps is that the pedagogical principles that underpin this work very much aligns to what we see as best practice, engaging with what we call the principles or metaphors of the pedagogy around cultural relationships, responsive pedagogy. It's building relationships with place. It's that um, authentic um, activities where kids are agentic in the process. Um, so, so, so we had that, then we put it into practice and our teacher only day at the end of the year was us actually going out and over to the Mount, engaging in some activities where we built connection with place, looked at the stories of place and how we can um, transfer that 
to our when working with our students. Um, yep, got that one. So this year is, I guess, the first time it looked a bit different. So how our teachers interpreted that was different and that was okay because our consistency was our why, how and what they did, that could be their individual personalities in the class that came out in that. Um, so for example, what we had was we had some camps where the students were divided into committees, some looked after the transport, um, looked after the health and safety, um, planned activities, um, and they became rich integrated learning experiences. So for example, our transport crew had to work out um, how far were they traveling? What's the cost of fuel? How do we, what's the um, fair way to distribute um, reimbursement for our parents? So it became real rich learning experiences for them. Um, other classes interpreted it, they mapped out what this space had to offer and how can we um, engage with it in meaningful ways. For example, doing water testing, what's the ecology of the place that we're going to, how can we give back to it by um, doing planting and so forth. Um, yeah, so it was a real change for us going from the, just going from an activity to an activity to an activity to um, deliberate acts of teaching, I guess, sitting in that and learning. I really love the front end of our curriculum, but we can't constantly hang camps on that. It's actually engaging too with our disciplinary learning. Um, where are we at? I would say that we are at a space where we're very much in our infancy. There are some people who um, have got clear clarity around it, they're clear on our why, um, but maybe don't yet have the capability to implement it. Um, we've got our flyers who have got clarity and they've got the capability. Um, and there's some who lack the clarity and the capability too. So it's us being really deliberate next year moving forward is how do we um, maybe buddy up teachers to be able to um, spread capacity, build their clarity around what we're doing. Um, but that also comes back to as a senior leadership team. It's just like in your classroom reflecting um, what did we miss? How do we individualize that PLD for our staff just to build where the gaps are? So we're all heading in the right direction. Um, yeah, so that's moving forward is just identifying where our teachers needs for growth are, um, providing that targeted PLD for them. Um, we, we don't, um, that's a really key part of the leadership I get is providing that PLD to support our staff when we put these things in place, how are we growing them to do it? Um, we've engaged with other PLD around um, leading by learning, um, and it's having conversations to um, unpack practice, challenge people who are reverting to old ways um, that necessary aren't best interest for our students. Um, actually, as a whole staff, visiting sites where we will be engaging with and doing those mapping exercises and sense making together, what those um, camps could look like. Um, and then another key part of it is we recognize that depending on where people are, some people needed more scaffolding and support around that planning process. So um, that group that I identified earlier who chose to, we're developing a resource to help people map out what would planning um, and the learning look like around planning for an EITC experience. And the other thing I've chucked in there is just using our co-inquiry tool, which is um, observation, coaching, mentoring of teachers. So actually being in each other's spaces and looking at how we're going about implementing that and having those conversations and mirroring back is are we meeting our why? So yeah, that's our journey. Um, although I'm not the person at the, what is it? The front line out there on all those camps, um, as a leader in this space, um, I see our key role as being really clear on the big picture why. We are very blessed to have an amazing board who supports what we do and provides the um, funds to be able to have these amazing EOTC experiences. Um, but also as a leadership, just our job is to, come if this is important to us and it's meeting our strategic direction, which it is, it's providing the um, professional support for our teachers to be able to implement it. So that's me.
Kia ora, thank you so much, Shannon. What I really love about um, your journey and the perspective that you've just shared is um, just how much you've thought about it as a senior leadership team and that it's not just on individual teachers to be mm. on this journey themselves, um, but to really be thinking about what are the supports that we need to put in place and having that really clear why. Um, so thank you so much. Um, that was really, really valuable um, and I really you. appreciate your time. Um, I see that Jeff has joined us, which is perfect timing. So we'll just let him in. Okay, so um, I'd like to introduce our next case study school. Um, let me just share my screen here. Um, and I need to present. Okie dokie. So um, our next case study school, oh, Rob, you might just need to put yourself on mute for a second. Or Jeff. Cool. Um, our next case study school is Mana College, and we have Dr. Robert Stratford and Jeff Chapman with us from Mana College. Um, Rob is the um, assistant principal there, and Jeff is now the year 10 dean. And they've been uh, working on revisioning their school camps, uh, particularly in the junior um, year levels for the last couple of years. Um, they're going to be talking to us about um, how to go about forming really authentic and meaningful partnerships with the school community and particularly with mana whenua. So I know this is a topic that lots of you are interested in and um, so I'd like to invite Rob and Jeff to share their experiences with us. Yelda, thank you to the both of you. Nami nui, kia koutou. No mai hau mai kitu kitu pikitia nga o tēnei ahi ai. I'll, go, I'll dip into sharing screen. So, so Jeff's um, currently on location um, under a mountain somewhere, um, and uh, he'll be filling in the gaps. And I'll be talking through our uh, our exploration days as we develop them from year nine. So I'll hook into the the, the screen sharing, and there we go. Just share over to there, and start with the beautiful picture of. Uh, Mana Island, uh, Te Mana Okupe Ki Aotearoa, uh, which is the name given um, to the to the island uh, by the daughter of Kupe, um, and through dint of um, Ngāti Toa's um, benevolence, the name that they've given to the school of Mana College. So it was a really interesting story when we took kids to Mana Island for our exploration days in our revisions camp that we could connect them to the journey of Kupe through the through the narratives that Ngāti Tōra were able to provide. And so I think that that, that image of, of sharing and connecting to, to this beautiful place um, where so much um, positive rest, um, restorative work has gone on and where Ngāti Tōra have also had um, uh, some kaitiaki roles, especially in, in recent decades. Um, it was, it was a wonderful way to revision a school camp along the lines that that Sophie has helped us develop. So, so um, was, if we talk about the, the background, I think this might be a familiar place to start for, for many schools because um, we, we traditionally had this sort of, this arduous affair of a of sort of the annual school camp um, up the road somewhere we, where we climb ropes and, and generally a, Treat the um, treat the wilderness like some sort of playground, um, without reference to its history, to its significance, to to its to its ecologies, um, and and not only was that not the right why in terms of Shannon's language, um, it was also it was expensive and it turned a lot of people off, uh, students and teachers. It certainly offered an insufficient return in terms of the curricula because it was a sort of a one-off adventure where the noisiest kid kept as many of us up as possible and 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 we and many of us you know either got wet or soaked or generally didn't feel the connection to a place but we might have done some good things in terms of connection to some of the people and the and the adventures along the way um, and instead of that uh, I've certainly been in my own study, read a lot of um, Mike Brown's work and looked at other David Sabel and and how do we connect to place? Um, also, Wally Pinatito's work about 
wanting a curriculum that, that, that answered questions about who are we and where are we, so that the kids from Mana College wouldn't need to go way out of the district to, to a the Hore Penua or, or other places to, to adventure, but actually understood what was precious about where we lived, um, what stories it held, what significance it held in terms of natural ecologies or iwi or mana whenua's um, background, and how they could feel proud as being um, either living within the rohi of Ngāti Toa or from Ngāti Toa, which several of our students are. Um, so, so, so I've moved to the presentation to the, as I move towards the presentation about how we worked with mana whenua, what we ended up with, um, instead of a, a, a sort of a highly expensive three-day uh, traditional camp, we moved to the into a three-day rotation um, where they all went home at night. Everyone went home, which was a good thing. Um, which involved uh, splitting the Year Nine cohort into three groups. Um, so there was a. Um, they cycled through these, and they went in different orders, obviously, because they couldn't do each one in, 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 uh, what, at the same time. Um, we're talking about, um, it was about 115 uh, Year 9 students. We're in groups of, so in three groups, the first group of that day going on um, to the marae and learning waiata, haka, um, and sort of what the stories were that were also going to be told in the two other contexts. Um, so it had a day at Fiti Rea, which is a maunga and, and beach area uh, significant to Ngāti Tō. Um, there's a bunch of stories there um, connected to Anglican Church and Ngāti Tō's significance in Te um, uh, especially, um, and also an area where it's actually quite a lot of fun. Because one of the things we've found out about um, trying to revision a school camp um, for adolescents um, is that, especially in areas where they've been, is potentially in some cases. So we wanted to make a balance between the historical and narrative and restorative, restorative um, connection that they could have to a place with that sort of adolescent love of each other of, 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 of being peers so that so that as they built connection to the the, the significance of an area they also um, made connections emotionally um, consciously or not because they had great fun there as well with, with their mates so it, it was a sort of I think it's really important emphasis as we sort of working through the research with Sophie and with with another partner we had in this process, Rebecca, that we understood that adolescents are still people and they still connect relationally with a, with, with, with a whenua, with a, with a moana as well. Um, and that was a big focus of the day at Pitirei, which uh, Jeff ran. And then we also had a day on Mana Island, which was a, a big focus for the iwi, uh, where they, we did pohiri uh, for every kid, we could talk about the significance of Ngāti Toa's journey um, down uh, the west coast of the North Island. Uh, Nathan, who was from the Iwi, talked about um, uh, the star map and talking about um, the po that's on Mana Island and the journey um, that uh, Kupe made to New Zealand <clears throat> as well. Um, and also, um, we could also talk about the historical and the restor uh, restoration focus um, of Mana Island. And that's really important because um, Mana Island was the largest island at the time in 1986 to eradicate, eradicate mice. So there's a, we've got an island with tons of um, rokawa gecko and, and, and native skinks. Um, and it gave kids a story for how much their agency could have to offer back in back on the mainland or in other contexts. So for us, the curriculum payoff there was that actually people have done a lot of damage to the planet, and, but they've also, if you have a look at places, special places in our neighbourhood, they've done amazingly well. World-leading sorts of 
restorative work. And you know, you can be part of that too. You could plant 500,000 trees and, and, and restore a, an ecology like this. And, and that's, all, that's something that, that we wanted. We didn't want, because we toyed for a while about whether or not to do something. And actually February is not a great time to plant trees. <laughs> but, and we just didn't want to do a one-off. But we would want to lay a platform for ongoing agentic sort of um, restorative connection to a place. So that's what we ended up with, and and um, the the some this, these are some of the images that that, that just to add some flavour, uh, sort of beautiful. Um, I think it's at Okawa Gecko. Um, there's so many of them on the island at different places. So you can sort of hear them running around. Um, in different places, the penguins, there's, there's um, Takahe. Takahe chicks were a big, big uh, focus. <laughs> there's that charismatic megafauna that still, you know, that, that can be found on a place like Mana Island. Um, and there's the image outside, um, uh, not the school Marae, but next to the school Marae where the where the kids were engaged in the storytelling. And back on, on the beach at Pitirea, uh, where the, you can see that that was a prize-winning um, uh, group who who did, who did a sandcastle a sandcastle competition, um, and they constructed Tafiki, which is the octopus, which is connected to Awadua, the local legends. So we're talking about the shape of Maunga and places around uh, around Aorohi. Okay, so how do we get to to some of this? I've tried, I've, I've probably gone over quite quickly um, how we got to have kids and boats and go to Mana Island and, and do these things, how we got to this. The partnership was a really important part of this. And in fact, I started to list some of the people who, 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 who were a big part of this process. And actually, uh, we had not just one connection to iwi, um, we had lots of connections to lots of people. Um, so I, I think, um, there must have been quite a lot of work being done um, <clears throat> somewhere along the line. Uh, it seemed to be quite a busy, a busy time getting all this ready um, when I started at the end of 2019 for our 2020 camp, uh, revision camp, turned exploration days. So Rebecca McCormack and Sophie were really um, great environmental education uh, context for us. So thumbs up for, big plug for Sophie there. Um, uh, and the work done in revisioning school camps that helped enormously. Um, also, thumb, a big shout out to the Friends of Mana Island who, who accompanied some of the staff uh, there. Be, although I'd got to know Mana Island pretty well, we had more than one group, and having having someone who knows about the history of Mana Island um, from a, from a Western point of view um, chirp and teachers' ears about this is we think this is somewhere where the old farmer got buried in the rum barrel added to the to the context but there was so much support that we got through the iwi and it's a really important part of our story uh, and it's an ongoing benefit because if we wanted to to connect to place um, these people um, were as it turned out for us the right people to go to so uh, Bianca Elkington who's she's currently the education manager for Ngāti Tōa um, and she has that role, uh, Ngāti Tō is a post-settlement iwi and they're in a hugely kind of um, go forward mode um, over the last couple of years. And um, Bianca, although she was very busy and is actually continuing to be really busy as, as, as typical, uh, is typically found in, in Runanga settings, she was able to say, you know, why don't you fellas go talk to the Fano? Do you know, keep it, who, 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 who are your kids? Where are they from? The Fano know lots of things. And, and um, you know, we, we started to talk to people we knew, such as um, Nathan Ray, who was, um, he's the uncle of quite a few of our kids, as it turned out, and the grandfather of some too, and it was working at Mana College already as a, as a carving teacher. Um, and, as it turned out, just he was the right person to talk to to build other connections with other members of the iwi, and to talk to long experts, um, and talk to whānau members, and talk. And he was able to talk to Komatu about what knowledge was the appropriate knowledge 
for him to share because one of the things you don't want to do in a revisioning camp situation is have a whole bunch of um, of students turn up <clears throat> um, and just get downloaded all the all the important <laughs> matauranga that exists in the basket of, of of a particular iwi and then not give that the respect it deserves. And and so Nathan himself had to sort of work that through, and he did that on our behalf. It was invaluable part of the process. Saying, go away, talk to the co-mata, and say, can I? We'll talk to them about this and not about that. So you have to pitch that. You know, have to takes time for that process to happen, and to to give it the right sort of um, um, uh, place within the within the day as well. Um, so. <clears throat> um, really thankful for Nathan to be able to do that, and from and what we ended up with was a really good partnership around. Okay, we do the pohiri. We're going to make sure we have our speakers on our side. That the kids have the waiata that's ready, and we'd practice waiata beforehand. That we'd honoured everything that went into that process, um, so that when the when the kids came to the to to the island, um, they could. They could sit with Nathan for sort of a quarter of an hour. Um, well, it was about half an hour, 45 minutes. We went through various stories uh, before we sort of um, rotated um, kids through. They did some wronger work with another iwi expert that Nathan had drafted in. Um, and then we did a sort of a, a small circumnavigation of the island, half the island. We, a, a bit um, as Shannon was talking about, we were really keen not to make it. Um, Exclusive. It wasn't an, an adventure trip that really appealed to to only a portion of our cohort. I think it was over the time the walk. Um, there were two teachers who didn't make it and one student. <laughs> um, uh, and, and I and so I mean it was it was something that pretty much everyone could do and learn from. And at the end of it, they had the option of sort of jumping in on the fine days to go for a swim around it. You know, as long as we had our Rams, right. Um, so um, that what what that's meant, and I just wanted to sort of show where the process has gone from there because it's interesting having built up our um, exploration day process in a way that worked with Ewe, and I think it's really important to point out that we did leave aside quite a, quite a good amount of resource as koha for the iwi people who turned up. We weren't expecting um, Nathan and um, Panya, who was the Rongia expert, to just do it for free. We actually, our koha was significant in terms of what they would otherwise earn, you know, in, a, um, in, an, in an employment role. Um, to, 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 you know, we pay for the resource effectively because they're giving us three days of their time. Nathan, in fact, stayed on the island and was doing workshops with other boys at the time, um, lining up with the, with the whakaira work that he did with that group. <clears throat> um, and, but having done it the right way and, and, and listened and, and followed, you know, worked out a way, worked out a process throughout the expiration days that um, that the iwi were really happy with. It's meant we've had an ongoing sort of flow on in terms of of partnership with iwi, and I think that's been really important for as we keep developing a place based approach, not just on camps or revisioned camps, but throughout the rest of the curriculum. So uh, we have at our governance level, and we already had this uh, to some extent, but it's continued to kick on by having we've got two iwi reps on the board plus other, a chair, there's an additional member of the board who's married to the, to the, the ex-chair of the, of the Runanga of Ngāti Tōa board. Um, and uh, we also have a, we have a CCM model um, that's been developed over the last couple of years with Rebecca McCormick that has an iwi representative on it now. So she's been, she's, A community partnership that's funded out of DOC initially. And we've been able to have someone come along and plan pace-based activities through the through the rest of the year and through other curriculum areas so that we're leveraging our exploration days partnership 
and the sense of place we've expected with across the curriculum um, in our partnership with Iwi now. Um, in fact, I'm meeting with with her tomorrow to discuss how we um, how we can do this more every day. So um, Iwi have said that their environmental plan is going to involve a particular stream, which actually just runs across our boundary. So um, the investment that we put into the exploration days is we're hoping to continue to pay off in terms of actually next year's junior science unit will include a whole series of work that's connected to that stream, which aligns with the EWI's environmental plan. And, and it also supports their education initiatives. So I think that's the real, like we're getting payoff by getting the partnership right in the, in the first place. Um, we're also funding, as we missed out on getting our exploration days run at the start of the year because of COVID and transport problems. So we've deferred it till after the seniors go, which as many people understand how COVID has operated the second time around is, is necessarily a squeeze as well. But um, they've, they've, we've been very keen to support us as we do year nine and 10 exploration days, not just year nine, um, uh, which we're really humbled by the support and advice they've still been able to give us as we develop a whole set of year 10 contexts. And in fact, we've really benefited from Bianca and the team um, bringing basically an iwi education service to our base. So the, the Puna, which is the education, uh, the name of the, the iwi's education service is set up a base at Mana College where we're doing, they're, they're running workshops on Maramataka um, and on um, employment pathway stuff, uh, especially for their Ngāti Tō cohort. Um, and also developing um, like like Tafari Tapafa style um, Modi order planning. Um, so it's, it's it's thumbs up in terms of partnership um, and humbled by the by the work of Nati Tor. I think I've I've met my time there, Sophie. But I will kick over to Jeff to see uh, see what else he's had to offer. So just check he's been listening anyway. Anything from you, Jeff? Thank you, Rob. Yeah, you've covered pretty much everything. Uh, I just I wrote a few notes and uh, as you were talking, so I thought I'd, I'd talk to those. Is that okay? Yeah. So um, just going back to when we were with the. Can you guys hear me? What? Yeah. We were um, with the uh, 50 day a day and. Uh, going out to the island and uh, being at Mana College on the Marae is um, a real key element uh, too, was having Tuakana involved. So year 12 and 13 students who were wanting to give back to the school and having them as peer mentors involved in another objective that we're trying to achieve as you do on campus to uh, develop those strong relationships. So that's really important. And another uh, feedback we got from their learning was that the tour kind of wanted to be involved more in the planning so uh doing some of the activities some of the, particularly some of the fun stuff and the bonding stuff and yeah the relationships which we all know is key to out the red um yeah and another thing too there was um yeah the, the pictures reminded me that um the photos that you showed rob was this really the uh, big part of our aim was inclusion and equity so that I mean not every single kid in year nine went but a massive percentage did uh there was no there was no barrier in terms of cash so it was free you turn up you have uh you have your backpack and your lunch and uh a few things you can get wet in and a jacket and you're away you're included that's all you needed um so that's an important point also that the um uh, Nadi Tor and the iwi in developing the relationship. I've noted a few things that you've uh, touched on it, Rob, but uh, I think we've been, uh, our journey has been going on now for about two or three years, and we're just starting to get our toes across, across them to with working with the iwi really collaboratively. You know, I think because we're putting in the time, we're, we're patient, we're listening, we're developing that trust, we're cautious in what we say and how we say it 
Um, and uh, from that, I think the the word they're seeing that we have the correct intent. I've heard that often from iwi or Māori in general, that as long as the intent's right and you can prove that you're there for the right reasons, then, um, you know, you're on board. <laughs> uh, and also what I've also heard often from Nadi Tor in particular, I think maybe Ash, some of the more outspoken members of the iwi, is that they're not going anywhere. So uh, if, you're, if you're in for the long haul, like we are, um, then, um, you know, their land, their, the harbour, the, the water, the rivers, the streams, the beach are all, are all there. They're not going anywhere. So if we're on that long game, then open, the doors will start opening, and they have been. Yeah. That's probably some of the points that I'd just like to raise from what you've been saying, Rob. Yeah. I think that's really key. There's so much to say, isn't there? I mean, the the Tukana story and the um, the I, I wish I could explain more how to how to how to how to convince us that convince you that we how to how to build a tent. I'm not sure I know what the what what the what the answer is in terms of of other than being authentic. And I what I was really interested in, I think, as Jeff and I, you know. Uh, who, do, who don't we, we've lived here we lived in this area for, for sort of 20 years which which maybe helps so, so we're relatively new <laughs> but um is the is that i think what, that the the way we were talking in terms of the revisioning of school camp actually lines up really well with with um Mātauranga, Māori approaches to, to what the environment is. Māori don't tend to see the environment as an adventure playground. They don't see it as a thing to conquer. Or <laughs> they actually, when we start talking about understanding where we live and who we are in this place and that you can't be an individual without being connected to a place, then that I think that message resonates really well with, with iwi. And, and it's, it's part of the the showing people that you you are in it for the right reasons because we could have easily just taken it hurled on the boat and gone done a lap of mana island and and paid lip service to 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 anything and and it could have looked quite similar and for some kids it might have been but i mean because they certainly like the boat trip but doing it the right way means that when i went onto the island with my particular la group my class they were oh that's my uncle <laughs> and there's a really different connect experience for especially for Ngāti Tōr kids which is kind of like we're on Ngāti Tōr land we need to tell that story we need to connect kids to, to that story and I think that getting that kaupapa right is, was was one of the secrets um, Fabulous um, well, thank you so much, Rob and Jeff. Um, what I really hear you say is that building a authentic partnerships takes time. Um, and I think what you're saying around the intent, the why um, is really, really important. If you have a clear why and, and you're transparent about communicating that and also listening um, to what people have to say then and what um, iwi have to say, then that's much more likely to be successful. But giving yourself plenty of time to establish that relationship and not have an expectation, but... Um, to really recognise it's a privilege to be working with iwi um, and mana whenua. Um, so, yeah, thank you so much for sharing your experience. I love that you've um, you zoomed in from location, Jeff, out there doing the real, you know, the real thing. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so um, I just want to um, finish up with a couple of things. Um, that is just to remind people that um, we are running three more workshops um, later this year in November. Um, they are in um, South Auckland, Levin and um, Temeru all in November. Um, and so if you would like to sign up for those, then please go to our website. Um, we also have, um, like I said before, information on the Revisioning School Cancer PULD, um, more generally the resource and also all of these case study schools. So both Matamata Intermediate School and Mana College have podcasts and written 
um, case studies available for you to view freely, um, along with a bunch of other resources that can support you in your revisioning process. So um, I'd just like to ngamahi kia koutou, um, really appreciate your time today and your willingness to share your experience and hopefully, um, no doubt, it'll be of value to other people. So um, thanks everyone for joining us and hopefully you found this um, webinar series valuable and please get in touch if you have any questions. Go well and um, we'll see you next time. Kia ora.